Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about Service Fever, a framework for writing distributed applications in Go. My name is Robert and I'm a software engineer at Google. I've been at Google for about six years and based on my experience, I've realized that people struggle writing distributed applications. And I'm here today to tell you what is our vision on how we think people should write their applications. So back in the day when we write our applications, we used to write a thing called monolith. We used to structure our application in a single binary where the components are tightly connected with each other and they communicate through method calls. And this architecture was great. It was simple to develop, deploy, and maintain your application. And also was performed because all the components were interacting through local method calls and share memory within the same process. At the same time, later on, we discovered that you know, this kind of architecture doesn't scale, the fault tolerance is hard to achieve, and so on. Hence, the trend has been to migrate to a new kind of architecture, which is a microservices-based architecture. In this case, you take your application and you split it into a set of connected components that run in separate services and they communicate through network calls. While this architecture solved the problems the monolith introduced, like for example, scalability, flexibility, adaptability to new technologies, and so on, it came with its own drawbacks. For example, now it became harder to develop, deploy, and maintain these applications. The operational overhead got higher. But the main problem, which we think is, is confusion. Confusion whether, you know, when you write your application, whether you should use a monolith or a microservices-based architecture. Confusion whether the way you design your microservices is the best way for your application or your use case, and so on. And in the next slide, I'm going to show you basically how this ecosystem evolved over time and how these things got even more complicated. For example, here on the left, if you look at the interest over time, you see that microservice-based applications just became a thing. Everyone wants to write microservices-based applications, and the trend is keep going. Also, we as a community have been developing a lot of technologies that help to grow the microservices ecosystem even further. For example, we did Docker and Kubernetes for flexible and easy deployments, service meshes like Istio for connecting microservices, CI/CD pipelines like Argo, OpenTelemetry, Prometheus, Jaeger for observability, and so on. At the same time, the internet is full of like very opinionated and contradictory opinions or whether you should use monoliths or microservice-based architectures. And you'll find, you know, countless number of videos, tweets, blog posts, and so on. For example, here we took a random post like a Reddit post, and you look at some of the comments. For example, someone is saying that a microservice service architecture is a panacea because it's simple. At the same time, it's the worst of the worst of a distributed monolith. Another person believes that we are mostly doing microservices the wrong way because we are not drawing the boundaries correctly between microservices. Another person just hates monoliths, and that's why they like microservices. While another person believes that we don't see the benefits of microservices because many oftentimes we believe we don't need them. And last but not least important, someone is not even sure whether his application is a monolith or microservices. And all these you know, opinion discussions and confusion actually grew over time because companies as well, they are confused. For example, it was a, a trend for companies like Uber, Etsy, eBay, or even Amazon to migrate their monolithic architecture to microservices-based architecture. While most recently, Amazon decided to move back to a monolith because of performance and cost reasons. So based on all these findings and our own, our own experience, we identified three key challenges when writing distributed applications. First, there is no official guidance on how to write your application. Should you write a monolith? Should you write a microservice-based architecture? Should you start to go monolith and then evolve it to microservice-based architecture or the opposite? Second, people don't know whether they should use microservices or monoliths, which one are good or which one are bad. And the truth is not, neither of them are not good nor bad. It's all about the trade-offs. 
For example, if you care about simplicity, you may want to think about a monolith. If you care about scalability, fault tolerance, then you may care about having a monolith, a microservices based architecture. And frankly speaking, this writing application is complicated because the whole ecosystem is complicated. Clouds are complex. We have lots of technologies to learn. There are many, plenty of frameworks that try to address some of these challenges, but they don't handle all the trade-offs. Furthermore, we are also biased. You know, when you write our application, you look which framework to use based on popularity, or maybe, you know, we, we don't use the framework because it reminds us of something we hated in the past, like Core by DCOM, Java LMI, and so on. So based on these three key findings, we came up with three ideas on how think well, how we think people should write their distributed applications. First, we believe that you should write a modular binary and deploy it as a set of microservices. This, along with delaying the monolith versus microservices decisions for later, will minimize the need for trade-offs you have to do between microservices versus monolith architectures. And last but not least important, we believe that the application developer should really focus on the application business logic and innovate in the application space and offload all this complexity of building of cloud interactions to the runtime. Based on these three key ideas, we implemented Service Weaver, a framework for writing better microservice applications. In a nutshell, Service Weaver allows the developer to easily develop, deploy, and maintain high-performance applications while significantly reducing the cloud cost of running these applications and also providing multi-cloud support. So you can take the same application binary and run it in any cloud. In summary, when you write a service with your application, you develop it using native language constructs and you organize your code around native language interfaces as you do when you develop an application for your local laptop. And you don't have to worry about any version issues. When you deploy your application, you deploy it as a single binary and a tiny config. And the service viewer runtime will run it as a set of microservices at the same code version. And service viewer also provides multiple deployers to run your application on a local machine, in a Kubernetes environment, or on a cluster of machines. Based on our benchmarking, we found out that service viewer reduces the latency, application latency, by up to 15x, and the cloud cost by up to 9x. And finally, telemetry and testing, Service Weaver provides integrated metrics, logging traces, and it makes it easy to do local testing. For example, these days, if you want you know, to make a small change to your application and see the impact of your application, of the changes, you have to redeploy it in the cloud, wait tens of minutes to see that change, while with Service Weaver, you just you know, do go run and you'll see that effect immediately. All right, so let's go into more details and understand better how Service Weaver actually works. In terms of development, with Service Weaver, we develop our application as a, as a set of components that call each other, where a component is more like a unit, like an actor-like unit in the actor-based model for the, for the ones familiar with the actor models. Under the hood, a code generator will vivify the application, for example, generate encoding, stubs, registration, and so on. So you write your application as a modular binary where you literally write Go code. You define your components as Go interfaces. And then the service you run runtime will deploy your application on the local machine as a single process, as multiple processes, or distributed on multiple machines, different pods, you know, replicated traffic load balance, and so on. Now, let's see how actually the developer writes a service support application. As I mentioned before, the core concept is something called component, where you structure your application around components that interact with each other. A component is represented as a Go interface, where the arguments and results must be serializable. In this example, we write like a cache component, which is simply a Go interface with a put method. And of course, we can have other methods as well. To implement a component, you simply write a Go struct. The only difference is you have to add this Weaver implement embedding to let the service Weaver runtime identify that this is a service Weaver component and it should treat it accordingly. Now, to instantiate the service Weaver component, you have to add the Weaver ref embedding into your main component, like here for cache, we have the Weaver.ref. 
to get a reference to the cache component. And to run your application in your main function, you simply have to run weaver.run, and that's it. So if you look here, the code mostly looks as it runs on the local machine. At the same time, the power of this abstraction is you can take this application and run it anywhere. And finally, to interact with the component, you simply do method calls. All right, so now that we've seen how to develop your service weaver application, let's see how you deploy it. So with service weaver, you release a single application binary and write a tiny config for the rock, paper, scissor app. You simply have to write just the name of the binary. And then you can run go run to run this application in a single process on the local machine. Or we were multi deploy to run the same binary on the local machine, but in multiple processes. If you want to run this application in the cloud or in a distributed environment, for example, if you run it in a cluster of machines, you simply have to specify the names of those machines in a file and do Weaver SSH deploy to run the same application binary, but instead of local, now run it distributed. If you want to run it in a Kubernetes environment, you simply have to add this small cube config where you specify the names of the listeners, your application will be available. And then Weaver cube deploy will generate all the Kubernetes deployment that you need to deploy your application. And then you can use your standard kubectl command to deploy this application, and that's it. And now your application can run in Google Cloud, in AWS, in you know, Azure, everywhere. We also have a custom Google Cloud GKE deployer, which allows you to run your application you know, across multiple regions. You know, we do safe rollouts. We do actually blue-green deployments. We provide routing. We can do custom resource management and more things. The, the nice thing about this deploy is like it's easy to add new config knobs to customize the deployer further based on the user needs. Let's see quickly how this app, your application is actually deployed. As I mentioned before, you write your application as a modular binary. We just define your components and interactions between them. The runtime will place these components into processes, where by default each process will reside in its own, each component will reside in its own process. But then the developer has the option in the config to specify collocation groups. So then these components can be in the same process if they, for example, they care about performance reason or security isolation and so on. The Weaver runtime will attach the Weaver libraries, then which will manage the interaction between the application and the runtime. And finally, the runtime will have different implementations, as I mentioned before. In terms of performance, the main reason why we service Weaver the applications are, are high performance and with reduced cost is because service weaver runtime is highly performant. For example, we have we provide efficient custom encoding decoding where there are no versioning overheads. We have a, our own custom transport built on top of TCP with custom load balancing. We provide collocation, which enables you to the flexibility to collocate components in the same or different processes. For example, you know, you can put the chatty components in the same process so they communicate directly over method, local method calls. And finally, we provide routing. Routing, which increases the likelihood to route requests with the same key to the same component replica. This is extremely useful if you want, let's say, to put a cache in front of your application to increase the cat shift ratio and further improve the performance of your application. We did some benchmarking where we took the online boutique application, which is a widely popular application advertised by the GKE Fox. The application has 11 microservices written in different languages. For a fair comparison, we ported all the microservices to Go because otherwise the numbers for the standard version of the app will look even worse when comparing with the Weaver version of the app. And we tested, we did this benchmarking in GKE and we compared the microservices version of the app, which is a standard version, versus the Weaver version of the app, where we ported the app to Service Weaver. Here you can see the number of, of like uh, Go code and the config used by microservices versus Weaver. As you can see, in terms of config, you can't even compare because Weaver writes like you know five six lines of code, while with microservices you have to write all these complicated YAML files. In this case, with like one thousand five hundred lines of config files. In terms of code, you write less code with Service Weaver because you don't have any protos, you don't have to set HTTP servers, you don't care about versioning, service discovery, anything like that. In terms of performance, 
service viewer reduces the number of CPU used by 10x and about 40x the latency at 99 percentile. And this is mainly because of the highly performant runtime we have. Now, let's talk finally about telemetry and testing. With Service Viewer, you know, Service Viewer provides logging. So each component in a Service Viewer application comes by default to a logger, and you provide ways where you can manipulate these logs to get a better observability into your app. We provide custom metrics, counters, gauges, and histograms, and we also generate metrics for you, which helps you to understand like how much traffic is flowing between your applications, what is the latency of this request, and so on. We integrate with open telemetry to provide tracing. And in your main function, you literally have to write one line, this hotel handler, in order to enable tracing. But once enabled, all your HTTP requests and component method calls are automatically traced for you, which is pretty cool. And finally, we also provide profiling. So with a simple command, you can profile each individual process across every machine and pod and aggregate in a single profile, which will be displayed on your local machine. Another nice thing about Service Viewer, it provides you like a bird's eye view into your application. So here you can see, for example, you can tell you like how are your components connected, how much traffic is flowing between them, what is the latency of the request. So this really, really should help the application developer understand the behavior of their application and, you know, identify the bugs and it also identify whether they can really take something to make the application even better. And also we provide integration with different monitoring frameworks. For now, we have Perfetto, Google Cloud Trace, and Jagger for tracing, Prometheus and Metric Explorer for metrics, and Log Explorer for logs, but we can easily interact, integrate with other frameworks as well. For testing, we provide a Weaver test package, which allows you to test your application by running tests in single and multi-process mode. And actually, the experience of writing tests with Service Weaver is as simple as writing applications. Another nice, interesting thing about Service Viewer is like when you do a small change to your application and you want to test, you simply do go run and you see the impact like of your changes like autom automatically like and right away. While today, no matter what solution you use, you have to rebuild the binary, deploy it in the cloud, wait for like tens of minutes maybe, and then you'll see the change. This can be very, very frustrating and slow down the development. And finally, we also have ways for you to do end-to-end -end testing, like you know whether the app works in a distributed settings, in the presence of multiple versions running, and so on. All right, so this was a brief introduction into Service Viewer and how it works. In this talk, I walked you through, you know, what are the main, some of the main challenges we identify in writing distributed applications, and what are some of the main ideas we propose, you know, people should think about when writing applications. And all these ideas are materialized in a framework called Service Viewer. We believe that you know when you write an application, you should write as a modular binary and then let the runtime deploy it as a set of microservices for you. We think that the person, like the developer, shouldn't think about whether they develop a monolith or a microservice-based architecture and delay these decisions for later because that allows them to not make all these trade-offs, which they have to always do between using a monolith or microservices. And finally, we propose service viewer a framework actually if we encapsulate these ideas and make it easy for you to develop, deploy, and monitor high-performance applications, you know? And we allow the developer actually to focus on the application business logic and innovate in the space where it actually is the best. And let all these complexities of dealing with the cloud interactions to the framework, the service viewer runtime framework. So we would, if you want to find more about service viewer, just go to serviceweaver.dev or you can email us at serviceweaver at google.com. We would like to, you to try out the project, to contribute and give us feedback. And most importantly, we want you to work together with us to help you integrate with Service Viewer and have a nice experience. Thank you.